When I first started building React apps after working with Express.js, one thing felt really odd. React didn't have real middleware for outs. If you wanted middleware-like behavior, you had to wrap components in higher-order components, which was clunky and hard to maintain. Next.js tried to fill the, that gap with its own middleware, but it was a mixed bag. A single file for everything, rejects to decide what routes it runs on, lots of messy if-else logic when you need to include different functionality, and even a security issue at one point. But now the wait is over. With React Router 7.9, true middleware support has finally arrived, and I think the React Router team got it right. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to use this new feature to make your routing cleaner, more secure, and easier to maintain. Let's dive in. I am logged in into the application. This application has two pages that are protected, right? And uh, the user needs to be logged in to access them. There's dashboard page and admin page. And the way it works, these pages check the session and take the access token from the session and make a request to get user information. So that's what dashboard does and that's what admin page essentially does as well. We also display user information in the navigation bar right here. This navigation bar is located in the dashboard layout. This dashboard layout is shared uh, by dashboard page and admin page and this um, layout does essentially the same thing, checks the session, uses the access token to request user information. Let's go ahead and take a look at the diagram. As you can see, we have a dashboard layout, dashboard page, and admin page. They all use get user info function to essentially get user information. Obviously, this setup is not efficient, it's not dry, and we can improve on that. And the way we can do it is by using middleware. So in this middleware, we will check if the user is logged in. And obviously, if it's not logged in, we'll redirect it to landing page. But if the user is logged in, we'll get uh, access token from the session and uh, call get user info function to get user information. Then uh, this middleware will pass the user context to the dashboard layout, dashboard page, and admin page and those pages will display the user information. So let's go ahead and take a look how to implement this. Before we jump into the code, let's uh, check uh, the middleware page of the React Router documentation. Right off the bat, it tells us that in the framework mode, we must opt into middleware via future V8 middleware flag because it contains minor breaking changes. Then it actually tells us how uh, the middleware runs, right? It's going to be root middleware start, the parent, the child, then the loaders, and then again, you know, at the end, uh, it runs the same way in the child, parent, and root middleware. So the next thing you can see, there is a quick start. So yeah, you obviously need to set the future V8 middleware to true. Then you're going to create a context, and then you're going to be exporting middleware from your routes. And then uh, later, if you scroll down to the page, they give you actually a good examples, right, of how to use the middleware. And right here, you can see common patterns for authentication that we're going to be using. There's also a good pattern for logging. And then uh, one more is the response headers, right? The response headers we will be using as well. And what you're going to do, you're going to have to call function next. And then when you get the response, right, you can uh, set whatever headers you want. Okay, now let's head to the code. First, we'll need to define user context. So let's go ahead and create context.cs file in the app folder. In this file, we'll put the following code. We import context from the React router. And then we defining user context uh, with a create context and uh, we need to have a type of user info and let's go ahead and define that type let's go ahead and create types.d.ts folder in the app as well and in this folder we'll define the user info type so in this type 
uh, we have uh, the property sub, email verified, name, custom role. Um, this property will show if the user is admin or not, email and username. All these properties come in the response from user info endpoint that we use to access user information. And if you would like to learn how to do it, please check out my video on how to use ID, access and refresh tokens. Before defining middleware itself, let's check what it actually needs to do. So in the routes uh, dashboard file, let's go ahead and take a look at the code. And basically what this code does is get session and then get user out of this session. Obviously, if the user does not exist, it uh, redirects user to the landing page. However, if the session exists, uh, dashboard creates an API client class where it passes the session and also Cognito domain because we're requesting the user from Cognito IDP or identity provider. And uh, we make a call. So if, if we receive a response uh, from the user info endpoint, we pass the response data to our dashboard layout function. And we also set cookie header and we do API client commit. And the reason we do this is because the session has uh, access and refresh tokens, right? There may be a possibility that access token expires and then we'll need to use refresh token to get the new access token. And after we get the new access token, we need to save it in the session. So the next time we use that information, the access token will be up, up to date. So basically we're using a auth 2.0 right here. So let's go ahead and move all this code into the middleware. We will create auth middleware.ts file in app middleware folders. And let's go ahead and put the following code in there. And let's go ahead and take a look how it works. So we're going to be importing redirect from react router. Then we're going to import the user context that we just created. We'll use API client class to request user information. And obviously we'll use get session uh, from services session.server.ts file. And if you would like to look at this file, it's going to be right over here. Session. This is where we define session. And by the way, the link to the code is in the description below. So let's go back to auth middleware file right here. We define the middleware and what we have to pass is just request and also context and then the next function. So first we're going to get session and we check if the session has a user. So we basically do the same steps that we did in the dashboard. Then we check if user actually exists right in the session. If it doesn't, so we redirect to the landing page. However, if the user exists, we instantiate an API client passing in the session and the Cognito domain and make a call to auth to user info to get user information. So now after we get the user response, we set it in the user context using context set function. Now we have to remember that the access token may expire and we will re-request a new access token uh, using refresh token and API client class will take care of that. However, now we will need to commit the session with this new access token to save it. And the way we do it, obviously we're going to set cookie header. So the way you can set response headers in the middleware is just basically you await, you call the next function and await for the response, right? And this next function will essentially going to call all the other request handlers. In our case, it can be um, dashboard layout, dashboard or dashboard layout and uh, admin page, right? And after those request handlers are done, you're going to receive this response. And what you're going to do on this response, you're going to do response that headers that set and you're going to set cookie or any other headers that you like. 
Now all we have to do is to attach this middleware to the dashboard page. So let's go ahead and update the code in a dashboard page. In order to do this, you'll have to export uh, middleware and then a route middleware, and then we'll need to attach uh, auth middleware that we just defined. And as you can see, this is the middleware array. So you can potentially have uh, many different middlewares. That's great. Now in the loader functions, all we have to do is to get user context from the context and then pass it down to um, dashboard function. In the dashboard function, you can just grab this uh, user info from the loader data and then you can display uh, the name of the user. So this is very simple. Now let's go ahead and update admin page in the same way to use middleware. Again, we're going to export uh, middleware right here and pass the auth middleware in the loader function we'll get user context that is provided by the middleware here since it's an admin page we also check if the user is admin or rather if the user is not admin then we're going to redirect it to dashboard so non-admins cannot access the admin page and then we're going to return user info where we distract the name and again we show the name of the user on the admin page finally in the same way let's go ahead and update uh, dashboard layout it's in the app layouts folder we have a dashboard layout here let's put the new code in there so again in a dashboard layout we're gonna uh, export middleware which would be route middleware function with our auth middleware in the loader function we get the user context again and pass this context to the layout and in this layout is basically we do uh, checks right if this user is admin we can show the admin navigation link uh, and then you know we also display the username uh, from the user info if this um, name exists on the user info object and that's basically it so we can go ahead and run our application before we run the code we have to make sure we have two things right because as i mentioned before react router middleware is stable in the version of react router 7.9 so please make sure that your react router is version 7.9 so you have to make sure these react router dependencies are at the version of 7.9 and the second thing is that in the framework mode which we are in right we need to opt into the middleware with a future v8 middleware true so you can set this in react router config.cs file we are all set. Let's uh, run the application with npm run dev. And if we switch to the browser and we can refresh the page and we can see that everything is still working. Obviously, we cannot see any visible changes, um, but we are not breaking anything either. So it means our refactoring to middleware worked. Finally, we can actually optimize our code a little bit more uh, because we're using the dashboard layout right and this dashboard layout applies to both admin page and the dashboard page so when we run middleware in a dashboard or admin we're actually essentially go gonna run middleware through the uh, dashboard layout so therefore what we can actually do right we can actually right here remove the middleware from the admin page and then we can also do the same we can remove the middleware from the dashboard page and since we are using the middleware in the dashboard layout we should be okay accessing the user context in admin page and in the dashboard page even if we're not attaching the middleware in those pages so let's go ahead and double check if our code is still working and if we can refresh the page right everything is still working we can switch between the pages and nothing is breaking and that's how you can use the new middleware feature in react router 7.9 to make your routes cleaner safer and easier to manage as you may have noticed we make a call to get user information in the middleware and each time we navigate to a page this call is made a better way of doing this is to request user information when user logs in and then save it in the session 
However, we're using cookie session storage, which is limited to four kilobytes and barely allows us to save access and refresh tokens. In the next video, we will learn how to increase the storage by using different session storage drivers. Please check it out.